Hello and welcome to the Kryptonaut Podcast. I am Mark Stores, and with me always is... Chris. And Rob Morphy. Welcome to the Two for One Mystery Bag Monday, guys. Oh, it's one of my faves. Oh, hey, it's the best. We didn't, we're here. Yeah, I think we didn't do one last month, but whatever, we're doing it this month. Uh, before we get started, as always, social medias, Instas, Twitters, and Facebooks. We're there, we're hanging out, we're talking, we're having fun. Ratings and reviews are always appreciated and helpful for this podcast on the iTunes and the Apple Podcast apps. Yes, those are two different things, and I'm going to continue to be mad about that. Uh, we're going to be <coughs> starting this week with the Mandura Goblin. Indeed we are. While the world was caught in the throes of the Great Depression, one family wiled their days away in a simple shack on a once remote expanse of Australian coastline. But their rural respite would be shattered by a brief yet utterly shocking home invasion by a, dimin a diminutive goblin-like being that seemed to have sprung fully formed from the pages of a Grimm's fairy tale. Fully formed. Diminutive. Diminutive. I didn't say it <laughs> properly, but I'm going to say it now. No, diminutive. you did. Diminutive. We, we diminutive. Gone, you know what? We could have gone miniature, but... But to me, that to implies me. like some honey, I shrunk the fucking kid shit where things are super well, tiny. It's yeah. not that tiny. It's just diminutive. Well, it's a goblin like being yeah. that came from a Grimm's fairy tale. So, Robert, tell us about this home invasion goblin situation that we're dealing with. Before I do that, as I often like to do, let's paint a picture <laughs> of the environment in which it takes place, yeah. which is an essential ingredient to understanding the horrors which follow. Will we be using oh. the word nestled? All right. Bob Rossos. I changed it this time. Oh, did you really? Yeah. Oh, you it, was, a bitch. it was nestled until the last second, and right, I, the good. first word I read is the replacement. Do we have enigmatic entity in there? I don't think I went oh, there. Okay, all right. Let's but we do have is some. A fiend? We have, what, what do we have? A fiend? Oh, fiend is in there. Okay, good, good, good. In fact, it was used pretty well. All right. Alliteration. Robert, take it away. But you know what? Maybe I'll change it for you. Okay. Nestled on the southwest coast of <laughs> Western Australia, Mandura was originally named Manjar or meeting place by the indigenous Australian Noongar people who originally inhabited the area. In 1829, the first European colonies were formed, but until the last decade of the 21st century, which means until right fucking now, most of the region was considered to be little more than a secluded holiday community. Now it's kind of a thriving urban center. Yeah. Okay. And, it, and it's gotten big. It's like a big regional municipality. But literally 10 years ago, it was like kind of a retirement center, and before that, it was fucking isolated. All right. As remote as it may have been until recently, in the 1930s, the long stretch of untamed land that rolled along the coastline of the Peel-Harvey estuary was positively isolated. The families that made their homes in the region shared their space with an abundance of wildlife and, on one terrifying occasion, a creature that seemed to come from out of this world. Mm. In 1930, 15-year-old... Barrel Hickey. Barrel. Barrel Hickey. Barrel Hickey. Wow, Barrel. Savor that name. It's a deep Mr. name Mr. Barrel. Right Mr. Yeah, Mr. No, Hickey. Meryl Streep. Barrel. Yes. Barrel Hickey. Was staying with her parents in a shack, in a shack known as a Humpy. Okay. Oh, weird. sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Going well, to the Humpy. Hanging yeah. out with her parents. Barrel and the Humpy. On Greery <laughs> Road, not far from the Mandura Estuary, where the Peel Inlet opens to the sea. So it's coastline. It's pretty. It's a shack. There's some jungly shit. Yeah. All Picture right. painted. Yeah. Sounds, sounds, absolutely. sounds nice. The family was relaxing in their cottage while Beryl was reading by the light of a kerosene fueled hurricane lamp. That sounds so dangerous. Oh, God, a hurricane lamp. I mean, lamp. it's basically a fucking lantern, but yeah. hurricane lamp sounds like you only break that shit out when it's on. You're going to lose your face if that thing yeah. goes over on like, you. Oh, totally. Disaster candle. <laughs> 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 nice. <laughs> Which I guess uh, they technically are really now. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> nice. That is when the unthinkable walk through the door. Oh, it's always no. the unthinkable. It's always no. the unthinkable. No. You want to think of it. Well, yeah. And it's unthinkable for a very specific reason. But don't think about it. Yeah. Because then you make it real. If it was thinkable, it well, wouldn't be fun. I mean, and I'm yeah. not getting into tulpa territory. I don't mean it's no. unthinkable in that it's manifest because it was thought about sort of like the state. Yeah. Are the chaos man. magic? We can we can we can do it anything we want in a minute. Okay, good. But right now I'm saying it's unthinkable in that it is the last thing you'd expect to fucking come sauntering through your front fucking door. All right, door. bring it, Robert. Okay. And this is uh, I'm going to quote uh, Beryl here. While sitting reading with my parents in a humpy on a block in Mandura in Greery Road by the light of a hurricane lamp with the door partly open, the time about 8 p.m. as we went to bed early, a little pink creature walked in. 
It was obviously not human, yet it had perfectly formed little hands and feet and was pink like a baby. The, this is a oh. goddamn kangaroo? No. All right. I'm just checking. Jesus Christ. Did you can- know what a fucking know? kangaroo was? It was? It's, it's Australia. It's just the dumbest there's thing I've ever heard. Oh, my well, God. Well, there's really a description, to be honest. Yeah, there are kangaroos in Australia, but what about this description? And she's in Australia would make you think that she couldn't tell she's what She's in a, fucking- a humpy. I know. Uh, if, they're, if they're only going by the light of the danger candle. Yeah. Right. And a humpy and a fucking hairless kangaroo comes in and you're like, oi. Oh, there you go. don't. Just don't do My it. God. Right. Just don't. You know what? Continue. I'm sorry. <laughs> Continue. And you're like, oi. <laughs> I'm like, oh, we, Chris and I wow. both blanch instantly. <laughs> like, he's going to do it. <laughs> he's going to go full Steve Irwin. Look, you did this last episode with your terrible pun. I'm going to go full Steve Irwin. So, uh, crikey. All right. right. You can crikey. Fucking me. crikey. Perfectly formed hands and feet okay. is not indicative of uh, of, a, of a fucking kangaroo, plus it, no apparent tail pouch. I'm was... assuming they mean perfect, they mean human. Yeah. Okay, but, I'm, I'm going to say... But it's clearly not human. It is clearly not human. I'm going to okay. save my theories for later. Beryl described this anomalous elfin entity, not enigmatic this time, elfin. my friends. Elfin. Okay. As being about 20 inches in height with a bald skull, huge ears, a tiny slit-like mouth, and bulbous eyes that seem to be covered in a viscous, filmy substance not unlike the translucent, nictating membrane that can form a protective tertiary eyelid that is sometimes found on reptiles, birds, and even mammals. Right. Oh, now, God, it's a scum creature. It is either that or it's got like some nasty cataracts. But my first thought really is that, because I was thinking... That goddamn crazy, filmy third eye. Right. I didn't even know mammals had them. I knew reptiles had them and some birds. But, of course, I had to fucking, I had to research the old nictating membrane. Oh, well, that goes. It's the worst membrane it, there, there, It's not or, an or obvious it's, membrane. It's yeah. not the worst. Not when it's protecting your eyes from the goddamn elements, sir. This thing sounds like some That's weird true. little like, fetus, but continue. Beryl also noted that the humanoid's body seemed to glisten as if its sebaceous glands were working overtime to cover the creature's entire epidermis in a thin sheen of oil or grease. Okay. She further described the creature's form, stating, It did not have a round body, more streaked down like a child's body. I cannot remember seeing any sex organs. And you know what? For a 15-year-old girl, keeping it clean, keeping it legit, way to go Beryl. Needless to say, the Hickey family was more than a little perturbed by the sudden appearance of this uninvited and decidedly inhuman visitor. While this entity might have defied any simple academic understanding of its ancestry, Beryl's father had no difficulty divining the thing's unmistakably diabolical origins, according to Beryl. So the, so the, the father witnessed this? Oh, father and the mother were there. He clearly She's they- reading by the hurricane lamp. Did I not paint the picture? Of yeah. I'm sorry. What is he apparently knows immediately what this is. They're, okay. they're in the super shack. <laughs> All right. Humpy. Mom and dad. The humpy. The humpy. All they're right. in the humpy. And Beryl's reading a book. All right. Danger candles abound. Cool. Yeah. Okay. And this is what Beryl had to say. It was the most frightening thing I had ever seen. My father, who was religious, went white. He oh, was terrified. No. He thought it was the work of the devil. The yes. devil. I knew it. Ah, oh, the dark lord. Fucking what devil. else could it be? Your little 20-inch humanoid saunters in. Maybe he's dickless. Who knows? Maybe it's a girl. <laughs> it done? was at that moment that this man of God decided to take action. He jumped out of his seat and grabbed a nearby fishing net. Beryl described the scene. My father threw a prawning net over it to drag it outside. It made a frightened squeaky noise when it was caught under the net. He picked it up and it made a noise like E. E. Aww, I'm not doing that right. I'm sure it's more of a squeaky, like he, he, like a mouse, he, yeah, he, or a monkey. Yeah. He, he, the unclassified critter continued screeching and struggling as Beryl's pious father wrestled it out of the hut and into the shadow-shrouded annals of the unknown. Oh. oh. Sadly, neither Beryl nor anyone else in her family ever saw this oleaginous entity again. What the fuck is oleaginous? Covered in oil and... Oh, there's sun Did you yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Only Oleaginous is a legitimate is fucking it really? word. Yes. You're a greasy fuck. <laughs> so you Your saying... T-zone is in overdrive. Uh, wow. You are an oleaginous right. you know motherfucker. What? I'm yeah. going to say fucking A for the oleaginous. Did I say it right? Yes, right? you did. Okay, good. It sounds like it sounds like it should be like a margarine derivative. Yeah, oleaginous. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like you butter your toast with yeah. sore face yeah. grease. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> gross. All right. Oh, sebaceous glands. All right, so this dude's dragging it out. Nevertheless, Beryl's anxiety lingered. 
We never saw it again, and I went to bed feeling very scared. Fearing for his family's physical and spiritual safety, and not being keen on any kind of public scorn, Beryl's father admonished his family to remain silent regarding the harrowing minutes they had all spent in the presence of this fairy tale fiend. That's there. It's the fiend for Chris. Oh, fairy tale. Okay. Oh, nice. Fairy tale fiend. Nice. Our father told us to never speak about it or tell anyone, but I told a friend. <gasps> oh, he's, he's fucked. Betrayer. Uh, yeah. Bet- betrayer of the father. Yeah. Eventually, life has a way of distracting one even from the most profound mysteries, and Beryl was no exception. She tucked the memory of her family's brush with the bizarre away and did not dredge it up until she was confronted with an image of what was a nearly ubiquitous pop culture icon that literally helped to define the era of its creation. Was it a Pokemon? No, it was not. Oh, was good it, guess. Was it Dobby? Very good guess, because this <laughs> thing is definitely Dobby is the Dills. The year was 1982, and 67-year-old Beryl Hickey came face-to-face with a poster for Spielberg's blockbuster E.T. the Extraterrestrial. (gasps) She met a little miniature E.T. It was the anonymous lifelong friend whom she had confided in all those years ago who read about the film and reminded Beryl of the long-buried incident. She encouraged her friend to seek the film out and see if they triggered any lost memories of the Goblin. Beryl did as requested, and while the extraterrestrial's form was markedly different from the nightmare-inducing entity that had wandered into her family's home some 52 years ago, she was nevertheless struck by a specific part of the alien anatomy that had been created by Carlo Rimbaldi. Its eyes. The eyes were nearly identical to the mystical monster from her youth. It was then that Beryl decided to break her decades-long silence, and on Christmas Day 1982, her story was finally published in Perth's The Western Mail newspaper. In a report, she summed up her intentions succinctly. I hadn't thought about it for ages until I saw the film, and I just wanted to let people know there really might be funny things around. Which, of course, that's funny, funny might things. be the understatement of the fucking millennium. Yeah, seriously. So that's it. This thing All fucking right. walks in. It looks, like Chris said, Dobby as fuck. Okay. Like, if Dobby got dipped in a fucking vat of melted Crisco. All right. Okay. This is what we're talking about. Fucking, it's 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 bipedal. It's pink like a baby. Big ears. <clears throat> bulbous. I mean, well, we got the eyes. The eyes are right. the only thing we can actually know what they look like. They're it sounds ET's embryonic. Eyes. Tiny little slip mouth. Or just newborn. But it yeah, can it walk, sounds newborn. But it can yeah. walk, apparently. Okay. They didn't mention that it crawled in the house. All right. I think that would have been a very specific thing. Okay. It just walked to the front door. Now, all right. Going easy, skeptic. Uh, Magey, proto monkey, fucking. Newborn kangaroo, newborn. Uh, what are those things with oh, knives that are super color that I want? I want, I want Wamba? Yeah. Koala? Yeah, koala. With knives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they have they long have fingernails. Knives. Yes, they don't, they don't fucking have knives, though. What, what are those things? All right, yeah, so, those so, all right, so. Hairless koala that can walk bipedally, uh, tailless, uh, short-footed, embryonic kangaroo that can also walk bipedally with bulging eyes. I just, well, I, don't, I don't see the kangaroo. All right, that thing's fucked up. It's a, it's a baby kangaroo. But can you see that? <laughs> yeah. Can you see that thing walking on two legs? 20 inches tall. I mean, that's what they walk on is two legs. But they didn't say this was like a vacationing family from the Hamptons where like, I wouldn't know what a kangaroo was if it bit me. Okay. I'm, I'm just, I'm, we're, we're playing skeptical advocate. All right, we're playing skeptical oh, that's advocate. that's adorable and bald. All right, that's. I just want, I, I, yeah. I want to give that hair. That's, that's adorable. But it does have a tail. It does. It's true. Yeah. This thing doesn't have a tail. Okay. That they saw. All right. That they saw. That's fine. Maybe it was amputated. Maybe it was bitten off by a predator. Could have been. See, they didn't have a lot of time. It walked in. Everyone freaked the fuck out. Dad grabbed a sweet prawn net and fucking scooped it up. It struggled to fucking free itself. I can't help but to think, Man. what kind of primates are we working with in uh, Australia? Um, because I'm not. I'm, sh- I'm sure they've got some f- indigenous primates. I, uh, I just that's a newborn know. koala, but there, that's not that big. No, and it doesn't have really super bulgy eyes. It's kind. Of, it's got bulgy eyes and kind of has a little bit of a slit mouth, a little bit. Let me look. And no sexual organs because they're they. And that's weensy too. Like twenty inches is yeah, a lot bigger weeds. than that. I don't know if yeah. it would look like that. I can't inches, see that thing but... fucking walking either. All right, so but we can say safely that skeptically speaking, yes, maybe it was some sort of local wildlife uh, newborn that just man that for some reason just happened to walk into the house, was looking for help, and the father was like, "Damn, 
from thee, Satan, be gone. It is funny that demonic is the go-to. Help, yeah, I don't know why would you go all automatically demonic. I mean, I suppose if you're a you know a man or woman, whatever, of great piety. Yeah, I don't know, man. And your assumption is always that it's either divine or diabolical. But then is everything divine or, 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 or diabolical? If you're in like that, taco, if you're in that, if devil. you're in that headspace, well, yeah. Possibly, yeah. All right. Well, I mean, that's bullshit, I mean, if the bro. taco has a picture of the Christ on it, then yeah, that's divine. But oh, if so it's if the just... burrito has an upside down cross, all of a sudden it's fucking hailing Satan. Well, yeah. Truth. Okay, true. Yeah. A pretty steep burrito. You're finally there. Good. All right. So, um, skeptically true. speaking, yes, it could be maybe some sort of local what, what? marsupial. You're possibly. right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I said marsupial. No, good pull I with the marsupial. Yeah. That's that's true. But what what makes me um, not think that are just two simple things, and and it's a valid skeptical theory. The first one is the bipedal locomotion, right? And the 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 second thing is um, I, these people have to be at least vaguely familiar with the fauna of the area. They're living in a shit shack on the western coast of. In a humpy. In their humpy, in a humpy. Uh, of Australia. You'd think they'd be at least vaguely familiar. Like, if it, Maybe. if something came in and, it, you know, it was a fucking hairless newborn koala or fucking wombat or kangaroo or, well, it wouldn't be a wombat. That'd be quadrupedal. Uh, fucking something along those lines. You'd be like, huh. Right. That's fucked up. But you wouldn't necessarily think it's humanoid. It's got a, it's got the body of a child. It was literally described as having the body of of right. a child, not round, not anything else, right. with bulging eyes, slit like mouth, big ears, and not big pointed ears or not big animal ears, yeah. big, ears. big ears. So when a 15 year old girl or a 67 year old woman, remembering his 15 year old girl, says big ears, you have to assume that she means essentially humanoid ears. With lovable ET, with lovable ET eyes. With perfectly yeah, formed hands and feet, not these clawed nightmares right. that are yeah. baby koala. So, so those are the reasons why I don't think it was just novice tourists. Seeing, uh, for some reason, a tragically abandoned small child right. and, and uh, animal baby and, and saying, oh, the fuck? Scoop it up on the neck. Get the fuck out. Fucking dingo ate my baby, dude. Dingo ate my baby. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, if dingo we're not baby. dealing with some sort of local indigenous, you know, like I said, marsupial, and that's a smart word, so I'm going to say it again. Um, are we Do we want to go alien, cryptozoology, cryptozoological, well, well, or do we want to go hell? <laughs> because why? hell why? seems why? like a, you, really <laughs> there's no like reason to jump. think that there is no there's nothing paranormal about this thing no it's it everything is, I agree. is corporeal seems and it just like a up. biological thing yeah and people i mean there's things you were uh, we talk about this before memory is a, is a fuck hole it is totally and yeah. so she sees et and she's like oh that's exactly right so maybe et body wise was actually closer and that's what triggered her to it but her her mind just painted this picture of it looking more like a child, but maybe it did not. Maybe right. it actually looked more like E.T. body than a child body. Cause, yeah. But your your memory it's, keeps you... Fucks you up, yeah. Totally. I mean, if, if you could, if there was video of a certain memory and we can right. go back and you, you, you're you sure you know what you saw. Yeah. And if there was video footage, you look back, oh my God, it's like... That's yeah, nothing like what 40% I saw. 40% maybe yeah. what my mind yeah, totally. remembered it. I, I agree being. in principle. Memory is a fuckhole, a big fat lying fuckhole that assures us that it's right while it is constantly feeding you whatever data it feels like. Yeah. I agree with that, but I am still struck by the thought that she was like, no, I remember it had a childlike body and it had this and this, but boy, those eyes are distinctive. Like what you're saying is the exact opposite of what she described. And while again, I will concede a memory is a, a shady prospect, uh, especially one that is some 52 years old. Right. Uh, the fact that it was the eye she gravitated to, I don't think yeah. she necessarily had a perfect picture in her mind of what it looked like all those years later, or maybe not even at all, because terror will color what you see, and the dad seemed to get it out of there pretty fucking fast with his prawn Well, yeah, net. sure. But you're, if you, she basically remembers a, you know human hands, human feet, a child's body, a weird slit mouth on a head that was erected on a neck above the body with big ears and E.T. eyes, I think you can safely go it's probably doesn't look like the body of et like with the eyes of fucking some other fictional character i think you can just trust that it was just the eyes on a fucking doby-esque body so do we think that this is um again uh, some sort of cryptozoological the enigmatic instinct, entity the or instinct are we is to go cryptozoological demon? Yeah, there's could, no reason to be think it's. Though? I mean, it could well, be. Well, why I mean, go there? I don't know. But, but, he but, went but, there. 
Well, because the dad was a God fearing man. Maybe who he was, was given off of the vibe of a demon. All right, now listen. If they if they said the <laughs> stench be. of sulfur, yeah, there's, wafted there's in, nothing in the story. Yeah, and, but maybe and, and where he stepped, little flames leapt up. There's there, a little pitchfork. Like, maybe okay. it's like, uh, like a little Hellboy. Remember the movie when Hellboy shows I up? Do he's, just a little, he's a little guy. Look, it's a fucking monkey with a smasher for a hand. Remember? I do, dude. Maybe this thing just came from the bowels right. of hell. Didn't mean to. Listen, got summoned. We cannot from a magical fucking experiment. We cannot rule out the diabolical. I'll I'm putting it. I'm putting it directly on the goddamn table well, today. But, but only because the Tonight. guy felt for sure it was an emissary. All right, I'm saying maybe it's a, maybe it's the <sighs> devil. Not the devil, but maybe, well, maybe, it is. maybe that's the, literally uh, what the devil looks like. Oh, what a bummer! Yeah, no, that but, that was that yeah. suck? man. You go see the devil, and you're like Fuck full you, twenty dude. inches yeah. tall yeah. with his bummer. fucking sweet, endearing et eyes yeah. and his big you know, round or maybe ears. You, we could be dealing with some sort of undiscovered uh, species. Um, what, what, what was the um, the island of uh, Florensis? Or the... that's where I was going to go. The oh, Homo Florensiensis. See? Yeah. Um, the hobbits. The, 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 the hobbit people. There are um, which are supposed to be deadly in the fossil record yeah and, yeah, and, and in, well in in oral traditions of the indigenous peoples um that lived on that island and other island chains they talked about small dangerous predatory people weren't that they hunted supposed to be hairy, they though? hunted the pygmy elephants no they, i mean yeah, a little hairy but they weren't right. like loaded with hair they weren't chaka from like where land of the law yeah. no too. <laughs> no no they were just like standard small strange looking <laughs> proto-humanoids <laughs> every time i think of that all i think of is uh fucking uh will ferrell from the uh, was it land, the, the land, land of the land lost, of lost remake? Yeah. He's like, "Fuck you, Shaka." <laughs> oh, that's that was funny. Really, that yeah, was, fun. it was good. All right, so, no one laugh but me. Fuck you guys. It was hilarious. I didn't like that movie. Will yeah, Ferrell yeah. was awesome. It was I not, don't care. It was not what I wanted out of a land of Whatever. the lost. It film. was awesome. Robert continued. I'm more, you know, <laughs> sitting Marty Croft. That's my jam. Anyway, I'm old school. All right. <laughs> So I don't, I don't think those creatures, at least based on what uh, the scientists think, were covered with hair. And I'm talking about Homo florensiensis now, the Hobbit. And uh, and that was my thought. Like another small proto-humanoid species. Like every now and again, there's the Agawi in Africa. There are small. They look like early hominoids, maybe even hominids, um, that are more ape-like. And and they seem to function in these like clandestine groups in very isolated areas. Now, remember, this is not the urban uh, sprawl center that it is now right. in Australia. So if this was a very um, isolated, wildlife-ridden area, then one of these species of humans that were long thought to be extinct and maybe had never <clears throat> been discovered might have been continuing to exist. Could and be. maybe a small child got lost. Yeah. Maybe maybe 20 inches is not their maximum height. Maybe they get up to three full feet or something. Who knows? It was looking for help and the dude fucking netted it. I don't know, 20 inches is it's really it's tiny. It's really small. Miniature. It's a tiny thing. So yeah. I'm saying, maybe it's a, a, literally a lost child right. of some sort of proto humanoid species that maybe is a distant genetic relative to the human race. And is, and and and, and, and I think a lot of these stories, even though I think there's something to be said for like the wee folk and and other creatures that exist in alternate dimensions that have access to technology that we perceive as magic that's a discussion for another time but i do think also some of the legends of leprechauns and and, and little people um stem from uh prehistoric relic memories of m modern humans modern humans in the sense of genetically modern humans right. interacting <clears throat> with these other species of tiny proto-humans right some of which, you know, were probably dangerous. Some of which were maybe were even fun. Maybe you could party with them and drink some yeah. fermented fucking something and you get drunk. Smoke, Who knows? Yeah. Smoke so a mean. little smoke. There's a, there's a there's every possibility that once upon a time a tiny person, the equivalent of like a, a you know a Tolkien esque dwarf or elf, Jesus. accompanied humans on some expedition to kill an elephant or a mastodon or something. It's, and, it's a D and D that's campaign the kind of that I want to play. That would have unfolded and laid in the memories of men until they became the great fantasy epics yeah. of our day. All right. But so, I'm not saying this is it, but maybe uh, it is. Now is also Australia is the home of the Yahweh, right? The Yahweh, yeah. Okay, the Yahweh. So <laughs> not the Yahweh. Uh, no, Jesus, no, <laughs> that's, not, that's Israel. Not the yeah, 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 it is Israel. <laughs> yeah. Yahweh. Um, so, uh, I mean, maybe a baby, a baby, a baby mangy yaoi, mangy Sasquatch yaoi. Listen, bears uh, look all fucked up when they got mangy. Oh, yeah, they're all you don't even, every, uh, every animal does that's supposed to have fur. 
When yeah. you don't have fur, you, you look, look like something terrible. altogether yeah. else, something mm. foreign and horrible. So if that is a baby bipedal, uh, hairy hominid like a yaoi, right? Uh, and it's just fucking maybe like fresh from the birth sack, or I don't know how that yeah, shit man, works. Yeah, man, popped out. The Sasquatch egg. It. No, no, no. Out of the marsupial sack. Yes. Who knows? Maybe, maybe fucking, maybe the Squatch are <laughs> marsupial. That was good. That was good. And it yeah. somehow like plopped out, and it's just like, uh, I'm fucking cold, and there's a light, and I need warmth and some food, and I'm All just right. like, Meh! And then All right. there it yeah, is. No, so maybe. baby hairless uh, yaowie, I'm, I'm right. willing to concede that. What do you think, Rob? I'm thinking well, cryptozoological I'm okay. in the sense that I think it's biological. There's nothing for me to indicate that there's something fantastical going on. There's nothing that indicates to me anything obviously extraterrestrial or ultra terrestrial or or magical or anything fucking like that. I think it's I think it's just straight biological. I think it's an unknown uh maybe species, maybe related to us, maybe not. That just kind of wandered into the house, and yeah. now, while well, granted, it didn't seem to be a family of zoologists that know all of the indigenous fauna in the area, and there could have been a mistake made, you would think they would know the fundamentals of the animals that live around them enough to think that, well, a walking, bipedal, baby-bodied, or toddler-bodied humanoid... Uh, <laughs> Is is probably not standard ops. All right. And so the dad being religious thinks it's demonic. The rest of the family is just like, get it the fuck out of the house. Right. And that it's is going to stain the carpet with its mucus. Oh, yeah. That doesn't help. When yeah, that's pretty just gross. Oily McGreaser tank. If you're covered in mucus and you sit on someone's couch, the couch is oh, fucked. Oh, it's fucked. Yeah, it's gross. Yeah. That's probably no, no Afghan can cover that. Uh, no. <laughs> nice that is the couch's shame. Nice callback. Humpy's ruined. Um, so, Chris, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, if it seems like a biological something or other. Okay. I don't know why. You guys are both going biological? There's no reason to... There's nothing in the story that even remotely says it should be... Or it could be something else. Okay. Right. Really? Yeah, no light in the sky. There was no, like, swirling multicolored yeah. vortex. There's no right. weird attributes. Yeah, it's just... just a fucking... Just a day pink, in the humpy. Just pink, slimy... All right, pink, slimy thing? Thing comes to your door. Okay. And maybe it was fresh from the birth canal. Maybe that's what it was. I mean, I'm going to rage slimy against the mom. machine here. Here's me raging against Yawn Machine. I'm going to say that, uh, you know, maybe we are dealing, possibly, with some sort of invocation that went awry and a demon showed so up. So you're talking like... Someone like, cast a spell? Like Someone the Australian spell? Alistair Crowley was in the rural, rural portion of... Uh, of Western Australia. You can be anywhere and practice magic. I understand that. It doesn't matter. I'm not, I'm not dismissing it. I'm just saying... Rather than just assume it's a creature that lives in the wilds of Australia that just right. managed to make itself uh, known in a place that seemed to have warmth and food, yeah, you're really thinking it's a local wizard or visiting wizard <laughs> having invocations yeah, no, that go spell. awry, and and the the nefarious creatures that well, it pulls I up mean, from either the depths of hell or the nether verse or wherever the fuck yeah. it would be, yeah. just ends up wandering around and he loses track of it. Just no, the thing he who he or she called it from the nether regions of the dark one, and it just happened to pop up and it walked in this house and this fucking guy's like it's the goddamn devil and fucking yanked well, it out of there. Well, did the wizard ever find it? And probably make not. It I can't write this story. The story has got to be written. Do it. Well, I well, can't. You're doing Conjure it right it. now. Conjure me a tale, sir. I want this to be a little. I need to know what happened tiny to that poor demon so don't bad. be ask fucker when he got sent out of the house. Because now I'm worried he's cold. He's hungry. He's sad. Yeah, he, can he wasn't survive. even necessarily evil. He's got big sweet ET eyes. He, he seems survive. kind of fucking he's adorable. Maybe. He's probably still out there now. If this fucking thing right well, now, he's if this out there right now, now yeah. walk through your your front door, I'd be scared. I'm not gonna lie. Right. But part of me would be like, like those old Tom and Jerry cartoons. Like you can't be throwing a motherfucker out in the no, cold. No, you gotta help it. You gotta be like, yeah. does it like lettuce? Now if it likes meat too much, right. or it starts like scratching oh, yeah. your furniture with like talons, then you're like. All right, where's my prawning? Well, net? yeah, there's, there's <laughs> questions that need to be answered first. Yeah, absolutely. You know, right. you don't adopt it instantly, but I don't think I can reject I think it I might, wholly. I might adopt it instantly. It's got a little tiny mouth, so it's probably not a biter. Yeah. Might, probably, like, sucks I might adopt it instantly and be like, all right, yeah, guys, but, got a new member of the but family. But it's also oily as fuck, so that's hard. You, know, you can't pet the oily. You keep blanket on yeah, it. Yeah, well, it appeared blanket. oily. Maybe it was just... Maybe it need to be glistening. It just need to be washed the off. Yeah, you just gotta give it a bath. Water. 
Dude, you give it a bath, you put some baby powder on it, a little pair of pants, okay, a little some pair of onions. shoes. Yeah. yeah, maybe a little couple, like, like oh, a shirt right, or a hat. Right. Fuck you dressing your pets. Yeah. First off, <laughs> this thing oh might be God. an intelligent other species. I'm putting a so pair of pants on. So we're not going to goddamn coddle it like it's something we own. Slavery's fucking over. No, but I'm going to put some pants on. even if this is an animal <laughs> with an animal level intelligence, you just got to stop dressing goddamn pets, yeah, man. Yeah, I don't get it, man. I don't put my, my cat in pants. You oh. want to. No, you I want, don't. You do want I to. I don't want you're, to. No. The, you know what your eyes say? I totally Maybe fucking I want, want to. Yeah, no, I your can see it. Your mouth says no. Your eyes are like, yeah, oh right. my God, yes. All right, I'm saying demon. You guys are saying crypto. Let's, right, so what let's if it is agree a de- and say demon crypto. If it is a demon, you would you adopt it? If fuck it was yeah, a demon that, like, like, yeah, like young Hellboy, it doesn't know its nefarious origins. It yeah, just thinks, fuck yeah, dude. You know, hey man, I'm lonely. I'm cold. It's Earth. Would you try to make the best of it? Like totally. Papa John Hurt in the original fucking Hellboy movies? Yeah, I wouldn't put it out in the fucking cold. I'd be or, like, dude. Or let, would you be saving well, the world from massive apocalyptic destruction you, by letting it die? Let's get you cleaned up a fresh pair of pants. Would you touch it? Uh, back here, to the here, clothes this, again. This, this, no, this, <laughs> this is a real question. Besides your leftover toddler clothes that you can't wait to throw on this thing. If something like that walked in, <clears throat> your family's not there, so you're not worried about the kids and your wife's safety. And it's just it's dripping on your carpet, and it looks kind of sad and lonely, but also a little frightening because it's so weird. <clears throat> Do you, just by way of confirming whether or not you think it's biological or diabolical, just touch it with a cross just to see? Well, I'm not a religious person, well, so you, I don't your have... your wife might have something around. But I don't have access to crosses. She might have an old well, Bible. anything okay. holy doesn't even have to be but yahweh I, I don't, You had a Roman Catholic you, wedding. We were there. Don't you have to believe in that? Stuff for to work? Are you going by no. Fright Night rules now? I don't know, or are you going because by whatever? I, I wouldn't... I'm just saying, how do you confirm whether or not some random creature just came in that you can bathe and clothe in the desperate <laughs> way you want to, yeah. or that is something evil as you right. suspect it might be, and therefore you want to get it out of your house because you have kids to worry about? Right. You have to ask it. Uh, yeah, I guess I got to kind of play it by ear. Like you Sit want to it trick down. it into answering? No, I mean, I well, first hey, how's the, Beelzebub? I gotta, He's great. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. How's your dad, Lucifer? How about <laughs> Osmodius? Is he doing uh, all right? And then the spring in hell, and things like, yeah, he's great. His place looks wicked. And you're like, you're a fucking demon. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No, I think <laughs> maybe we should just kind of take a step back, get this thing in the sink, get it cleaned up. So clean See it. What it is. Clean it before the See interrogation. Is. is that what you're saying? Don't kick it. That's all I'm saying. I would not. I'm just saying. I don't, Listen, I, if I saw a mini humanoid, it. I'd be so I'd be scared, but I'd be so fascinated. Yeah. My first instinct would not be to hurt it. All I can, certainly not to chase it because a I'm not catching anything, and b if you do, well things can go real awry will, from that will, point it on. It will chase you. Well, well, if all right, if it started booking at me, a kickins in the works. <gasps> don't give it a kickins. Oh no, no. If 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 like I walk out of Chris's apartment later if it and it's wants to dark hug you. and this thing pops around the corner and he's all glistening and big fucking eyed, yeah. yeah. And he's looking. I'll be like, all right, we're looking, we're staring, we're doing it. And he wants and to give you a hug yeah! and Please. starts fucking running right at me. I am drop kicking that fucker into the next nether. He wants to hug you with his teeth. I don't know that. And the teeth. Hug, that's it's called fighting. <laughs> yeah, that's called eating you. <laughs> that's, oh my god. That is not a hug. That's uh, dinner. Uh, all right. Anyway. We are moving on here to our second story of the two for one mystery bag Monday. Um, we are talking about the deadly demon of Mafra. Did I say Mafra right? Mafra. Correct. I know. I want to keep calling it Marfa because of the Marfa lights. Well, I said Mafra. Yeah, but it's Mafra. M- Mafra. Well, okay. I think it is Mafra. I, I mean, I don't know. All right. In the 1980s, a young family heard a series of strange sounds emanating from their front yard as jittery as these noises made them they could never have anticipated just how terrifying the diabolical apparition that they would find lurking just beyond the door would actually be are we going double bag hell here we are going double bag possible paranormal families of three strange nights that change the dynamic forever Dude. It is a theme, Mystery Bag Monday. Oh, the fuck? Oh, the themer. All right, Robert, bring it. It's too much. Located on the northern border of Santa Catarina, which is the second southernmost state in Brazil, is the city of Marfa. So, South America. Okay. Big, beautiful continent. We got friends Brazil, from there. Brazil, yeah. gigantic nation on said continent. Cool. If you go deep, deep down, All right. the second southernmost state, okay. think of it as the Georgia of Brazil. All right. Like right above Florida, which is just the tip. Florida, Georgia line um, is is Santa Catarina, okay. where in the city of Marfa or Marfa. See, I'm saying it wrong already. Perfect. Mafra. Mafra. Lies. Marfa. I know. I'm gonna do it. Marfa lights for life. Whatever. All it right. Works. Although the population of this relatively small urban center has been on the increase, peaking at forty three thousand three hundred and forty souls in July of 
2018, the reverse trajectory suggests that the city supported far fewer citizens in the previous decades. With a population principally comprised of the descendants of European immigrants, particularly Christians of German and Polish, Polish ancestry, it's not surprising that the religious texts that Mafra's forefathers brought with them were littered with old world imagery of devils, demons, and other sundry diabolical entities. But it was absolutely a shock when one of these maleficent agents of evil appeared not between the leather bound pages of an old Bible, but on the front lawn of a family of three during the mid 1980s. You got a demon uh, in the front yard. In the eighties, it's a like, fucking got, party, dude. Yeah. A flamingo, a yeah, gnome, dude. gnome, yeah, and a demon. <sighs> Very home. Sometime during the summer of 1986, at about 10 p.m., an unidentified family consisting of a mother, stepfather, and five-year-old daughter claimed to have heard what they described as a series of quote-unquote unusual noises coming from the front yard. The stepfather, concerned but seemingly not overly alarmed armed himself with a piece of wood that was resting near the door. You know, door wood. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's what you do. <coughs> armed with his makeshift cudgel, he nodded for his wife to open the door and step aside in order to give him free access to whatever it was making the strange racket on their property. Instead of throwing the door wide, the mother cautiously cracked it open and her husband peeked through. He was barely able to stifle a gasp of dread before his young daughter ran for the door and flung it open. It would be sh it would be she who, years later as a still terrified adult, would report the appearance of the diabolical apparition that loomed on their lawn less than 12 feet from her frightened family. The former five-year-old described a bizarre semi-humanoid beast with a jet black epidermis and a pair of shiny ebony wings adorning its back. The glistening being was nearly 10 feet in height with large ears that came to sharp points and triangular eyes that burned like red hot coals from within its dark featureless face with malevolent intensity. The fucking devil. <coughs> it is or the Elverde devil. entity. Or, <laughs> yeah, it's or, or yeah, Jesus, yeah. a Pazuzu or any oh. other type of weird fucking demon creature. Possible Batman. Could be or a Batman. possible Batman sighting. Yeah. yeah, we can't rule Again. that out. Dude, sometimes you a go... Batman Beyond sighting without the oh, face. Oh, there yeah. you go. Yeah. 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 Sometimes you got a demon in the front yard, man. You got to deal with it. Although the child was unable to make out a nose or a mouth, she distinctly recalled the demonic entity wielding a trident-like weapon <gasps> in its huge clawed it's hand. It's got a fucking weapon. And it's just... Cliched That's so is dope. Fuck. That's what I mean. It's like, a really fucking though? pitchfork, dude. I, I, you know, a fucking demon with a pitchfork. The only thing this thing apparently doesn't have is horns. But yeah. but it's got. It's true. Well, does continue. it have little tiny horns? Well, little baby horns. It had e big pointy ears, which yeah. could be could if be it's black. Then maybe those were the horns. Yeah. We'll see. The weapon's kind of <coughs> cool. I like that. That's pretty dope. Oh, absolutely. It was as if the Slavic demon of the night. Chernabog, which was so magnificently rendered in the Night on Bald Mountain segment of Disney's animated 1940 feature Fantasia, had leapt off the silver screen and onto the lawn of this unfortunate Brazilian family. And it really does look, I mean, with the exception of horns and the fact that it's got a nose and mouth, this is fucking Chernabog fucking dead up. Chernabog. It, just hanging out on your lawn doing its thing. The little girl took all of this in in a matter of seconds and was, understandably, unable to subdue her shriek of unmitigated horror. At the sound, the creature on the lawn slowly turned its head and stared directly at the literally petrified child. You're gonna unable die. to move. Okay, well, the dead did terror. happen. Yeah. You're gonna die. Maternal instincts must have, kicked, must have kicked into overdrive as the grade schooler's mother grabbed her daughter and yanked her away from the door before the devil outside decided to do more than simply stare. A few steps away from the door, the child could still clearly see the satanic brute outside of her home. Well, thank God the mother stepped in and saved the fucking day. It seems that way. Because dad had the wood, the kid runs out, the devil's staring at you, you might die, mom comes well, in, Well, don't scream boom. at the devil. That's a fundamental rule. She's a, chi uh, she's she's a child. <laughs> she's five. This a fucking yeah. child. This is why I'm giving her the benefit of the doubt. But let me just say, generally speaking, a good fucking rule is when there's the fucking giant malevolent turn a bog on your lawn, when you're don't Five. shriek and bring your attention to You're it. You're five. You have no clue for a demon. You don't know what the protocols are. That's why are. this fucking training has to start in pre-K. So by the time you're in kindergarten... She's in yeah. five, no. she's in pre-K. That's kindergarten age. Yeah. They used to teach Chernabog in pre-K. Yes. 
This is a, what's a matter with the goddamn education system of the Thank you. It's Whoa. common core bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Taking exactly. away Chernabog class. You ever class. see how kids do math today? It's fucked up. Yeah. My son showed me his math. I don't know what the fuck he did. There was a 10 and a 30 and he added and did a whole fucking thing and there were circles and counting bullshit and he got the answer right and I couldn't figure out how the fuck he did it. It's an invocation. Yeah. It's bullshit. To the dark ones. That's it's not how I learned math. Crowley type math. Lovecraft. Fucking nine plus seven. What is it, Rob? Because I don't know. It's a demon on the lawn. <laughs> All right, yeah. good. It's I a can't do my demon. nines. Never could. At the same moment, the stepfather seems like he, he stepped out of the game. The mom grabbed the daughter. All right. But, but dad's not out of the fucking picture. Oh, okay. At the same moment, her stepfather threw the wooden club at the beast with all of his might. But just as it was about to strike the ebony fiend, it vanished in midair. The club, not the fiend. Whoa. Oh, okay. The wood I was, gonna was say about it. to strike the thing. Okay. Would it, go bye-bye. It bamfed. Right. Interdimensional bamfing. Yeah, right. no, it's a total It's a total night crawler. <laughs> yeah, well, weird. Well placed. Okay. All right. The perplexed family could only gawk in fear as the immobile monstrosity continued to stare at them. Then, with a sudden flash of movement, the thing pulled what has been described as a kind of cape over its body. <gasps> a cloak of deception? Who From knows the dark what, one? Sure. All right, it cool. could be a cloak of the bat. Could be. Sure. But, I mean, all right, so you got this ebony It could be cloak of the bat. Well, seriously. Like a... Sharp-eared, triangle, red coal-eyed, faceless fucking fiend on your front Ten feet lawn. tall. Ten feet tall. It's a big motherfucker. And uh, suddenly a fucking cape out of nowhere? Yeah. It's got well, a, it I has mean, a sense of fashion. I don't know. In pride. I mean, if it's all ebony and smooth, maybe you can't discern. It could have been there. I mean. Yeah, no, you're right. If it was like tied to the back. Yeah, or something. absolutely. But you know, this definitely. Plus wings. Uh, why are you wings and a cape? Evokes um, yeah, the, how the, do old, you, the old NASA gargoyle. I'm like, yeah, but how do you have wings and a cape? Why would you? The, not, the cape would, would get in the way of the wings. Well, the, the wings right, so the say you have a narrow cape that fucking it's just a fashion your statement between your wings. And your wings are free to move. But the cape does but nothing the cape for trails you. Behind. No, well, it makes it's you look good. It's a fashion statement. At that point, the cape is mere decoration. At, well, yeah. what, what, what the fuck do you think a cape is for? Since when do you, in your world, are you capes the most the functional part of your wardrobe? What do you mean? You it is always it. for decoration. You hide your face. Yeah. Like the oh. shadow. Yeah, I get No, I get, yeah. I get it. <sighs> and you shadow can, you can yeah. glide off buildings if you do it right. Well, if, 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 you have, if you have Batman circa fucking what I'm 89 uh, fucking... Nanotech yeah. cape. I just said that. I'm thinking yeah, it's true. this <laughs> appears to be <laughs> some <laughs> sort of creature, <laughs> semi-humanoid, possibly not, demonic in origin, and uh, maybe it just likes to look good. Okay. All right. It has a sense of fashion. Where this elongated piece of fabric had come from is anyone's guess. But what happened next would leave an even more indelible impression on the group than all of the harrowing moments that had preceded it. And the harrowing moments that had preceded it were pretty fucking harrowing. Yeah, pretty bad. Okay. Like, you already see the fucking fire-eyed, trident-wielding demon on your front lawn. So to top that, it's got to be pretty fucking good. As soon as the cloak flipped over the monstrous form of the colossal creature, it emitted a sort of shimmering wave that the eyewitnesses could only describe as a magnetic field before the cloak-clad demon abruptly evaporated in front of the now panic-stricken family. So fucking no cape, cape, flip, shimmer, heat wave, shimmer, dissipate. Yep. The former child recalled how in the months following their disturbing encounter, her mother had forbidden either her or her stepfather from ever mentioning the incident. The true reasons for her steadfast prohibition of the topic would tragically never come to light as the unfortunate woman developed a rare type of cancer and would perish not long after her run-in with this vile being. Ooh. See kind of like the silver man. See a demon get well, the cancer. Kind of like fucking the old know. Georgia stalks. Can't confirm yeah. there wasn't right. something you can't, there before. You can't, you can't swear that it's yeah. what caused it. But I will say this, and this is how we're going to wrap it up. The witnesses believed, that being the stepfather and the daughter as she grew up, <clears throat> beyond the shadow of a doubt that her mother, and, well, wife and mother's untimely death was directly related to their ostensibly demonic encounter. Whether or not she has had a restful night's sleep since 1986 was not revealed. But we can only hope for the best and presume the worst. No. Oh, jeez. Yeah. I, right. I don't know how I sleep after that. Listen, no, losing, what do a, you do? losing a parent when you're that young is, <clears throat> is tragic beyond all measure. But you see a fucking demon and then a but couple months later, mom the, dies of cancer. You're fucked. Exactly. And you, and you inextricably link <clears throat> these two things. Yeah, so you it's have not, to. It's not even like um, 
poor fucking or barrel that could like dismiss the memory until Steven right. Spielberg reinvoked it from yeah. the fucking I mean the Australian Goblin. This is something like it. it it's truly. I mean, like I don't it's know why Barrel's demon. dad thought that thing was a demon in, right. in the Australian story we just did in this double beggar. You know this. You almost have no fucking choice. Yeah, this one's clearly the well, demon if I had to pick. <laughs> let, okay, but let's put it out there. Let's just say what could it be besides a demon? Nothing does that okay. in nature. It has that, classic that demon. That I know of. Well, in nature, well here's the funny yeah. thing. You couldn't wait to make the other thing, which seems like a, just a rogue animal, demonic. This one, you're like, Let's try not to look at... You're not, I know, you know certain what? grasshoppers, uh, <laughs> when they're in a swarm... Well, look, sometimes, the guys, this let's is... Let's not prejudge by this appearances, is, look, I okay? Don't wanna, I don't want to... If, if, dude, if anything was a summon, that this was a summon. Right. Yeah, you know, it, the only thing it lacks is literally that it's half standing in a pit of fire. I mean, but do demons really? Uh. Kinda, I mean, this it seems classic demon in the sense well, of it's like too classic. It's almost too classic. It of makes a demon. me a little skeptical. It's like, like it's so demon. It's like you. If it didn't have a fucking pitchfork, I could almost be if like, the pitchfork, all right, a pitchfork. Maybe is this weird, is one yeah. of those weird creatures that can maybe slip, you know, dimensional barriers or something. What if it's and, an and elemental? When, and when it shows up, elemental or or whatever it may be, and when it shows up, people are like. Oh my god, this is terrifying and huge, huge with its fiery triangular eyes and its fucking big ebony wings and its fucking mayhem. This has to be the work of the devil, and therefore these creatures, which may not be evil, just may look evil, got instantly associated from a time immemorial with evil. But then it's packing a fucking pitchfork. Sure. And that changed everything. It's like, now yeah. now you're just living the cliche, you fucker. Yeah, the pitchfork that's, what, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like a Hieronymus Bosch painting come to life. Yeah, yeah, even worse, it's a fucking, it's a mid-80s metal album come to life. Yeah. Bosch at least had creative, like, fucking three anus chicken demons yeah. shitting out the fucking sinners of gluttony. Fucking, this yeah. is just, this is fucking early 80s metal. This is a cover of Iron Maiden's number of the beast which i love by the what? way but come on try harder you're an actual fucking demon apparently <coughs> yeah well or I mean, if it had what if it had a scimitar then we'd all be like oh is it a gin is something else going yeah, yeah. on is it sinbad oh. is it, it, it three uzis you'd be like is it from florida what's going on <laughs> yeah but fucking no it's Double got a scimitar. goddamn fucking trident well, well it could so, be it could be the formless and then it just it oh, had to take a form like that now the formless Elaborate on that. The formless. So well, you're it's just an entity entities with... that lack distinct form that sort of siphon ideas from the the head of the recipients or the eyewitnesses and become what it or is. Or one specific one. Or exactly. Yeah, especially if, you, if I mean you guys talk about the fear. Well, the ultra terrestrial. The, going back to uh, John Keel's theory is that they're tricksters. They do this and that, but their ultimate agenda is to perplex us, and they feed on our terror. As you call it, the fuck all. The fuck all. The fuck yeah. all. Oh, if that's true, it is a fuck all. Yeah, it's a I mean, glorious fuck all. But then again, the reason I don't believe that necessarily, I'm not saying I 100 percent don't believe it, but the reason why I don't like hold that as my like number one theory of what all this shit is is a because I'm more academically minded, and I really want to think that all of these disparate events aren't necessarily interrelated under one fucking weird manner. Well, yeah, it's right. a little, two, a little too it's neat. terrifying to think that it, they're all basically working on one solid nefarious agenda against the human race. Yeah. And fucking three, if that's what their deal is and that's how they fucking eat, they eat our fucking terror, then why aren't we Why aren't we accosted by werewolves every time we go oh, to yeah. the fucking store? Well, I mean, why, and not even necessarily getting attacked, but like popping out like, Brr, and you're like, oh! And, and like, that's it. Yeah. Thanks for the meal, dude! If it's just like fucking you. homeless people popping out to wash your windows, these fucking ultra-terrestrials should be popping right. out every... I'm a clown! Oh! It's like, oh, thanks for the burger, I'm I out. mean, if yeah. it's just for shits and giggles, then, you know. But if it's... If it's for shits and giggles, then why? Because we can't question an ultra terrestrial. Why, we can't step fucking down and you be like, try. why are you an asshole? You can try. Can you, magic do it? Or technology? I'm putting a call out here. Wait, magic as far as like... Magic in, as far as... I don't fucking know. You're our, you're our magic guy. You're I our magic correspondent. I don't tell everyone that I'm a magic person. Magic is not... It, it's like a blanket term. It can so mean about a hundred different saying, things. through methods of ye old, <laughs> or methods of ye new, Mean. be them technology... 
can we find a way to ritualistic strap down, methods? Like, like, all right, let's let's fucking dive deep into the geek. We're all fans of fucking Attack on Titan. Okay. Can we get one of these fuckers strap it down and scientifically oh, and or I like that. alchemically right. figure out what its agenda is, what its origins you, are, probably what not. we can do to fucking avoid the breast of them, or right. how we can broker a goddamn peace? Probably not. No. Well, I'm, I'm assuming, assuming why, why you, you don't know we until, even until tried. yeah until because there's a story it, where there, that happens. If there's some sort of entity. On that level, what are we going to do? Yeah, but what level? Yeah, what level I'm is assuming it? that they're on what? a higher level no, of existence than we are. Because chameleons and, and octopi or octopuses, sorry, I forgot that it's not Latin, fucking, they can transform into any rock form or color they want for camouflage. Who's to say it's not simple well, camouflage? I'm pretty sure terror. that like an ultra terrestrial or an elemental or any, any spiritual being being like that they're probably intelligent yeah and they're clearly but not on the fucking same plane than us. that we are we, we can't freddy krueger dream catch this fucker and be like tell us what you know oh you know what you know motherfucker. what you are being a defeatist human we build amazing things <laughs> i'm not things. gonna try We've to got, capture we went a fucking, to the moon before uh, all three of us were fuck you really want to have this argument about the moon table that <laughs> <laughs> i'm, table I'm that. sorry you know what robert Alleged moon. God damn it. Oh, God See, I know. It. You, should, you shouldn't have done it. Hashtag I, space is fake. Listen, I am saying that fucking the human race has achieved some magnificent things. And maybe these creatures have advanced camouflage skills. And maybe they're just as intelligent as we are. But there's a reason why they haven't fucking like herded us up into fucking pens and fucking pop out and scare us every time they need a midnight snack. And that is because we have something that fucking enables us to not be completely subjugated by them, which means we have a foot to fucking stand on. We have a fucking ability to defend ourselves somehow or they aren't as numerous or able to fucking attack us as we yeah. might think and if all of this is fucking true we might be able to take the fight to them and if we don't want to go fucking starship troopers at least be able to fucking establish communication and be like why don't you scare our fucking death row prisoners you know the guy that killed three people Live on the terror of his heart all you fucking want I'm for the rest of his days. Though, we can work yeah. out a fucking plan. If we're, if we're dealing with intelligent beings that exist in a completely fucking different plane than we do. But and they just happen to regular, pop in to fuck with us, which is what they do, then there's nothing we can... I mean, look, I'm all about it. I'm all about going Red Dawn on these motherfuckers. I mean, I'm not really... Because as much as I call, well, no, I feel it, like you it, are as, though. As much as I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah, as much as I'm like, yeah, fucking demons. Like I'm not trying to fuck with these things because the, if they don't well, fuck no, with me, well, no, because and, and if they are more powerful and they just more, they're well, just yeah, barely used I mean, by us. Then of course I've just tempted the fates and it's a I'm fucked. Yeah, we, we are literally dealing with attack on Titan, but things that we can't fucking we can't kill with but a fucking cannon on the fucking maybe wall. Maybe because there's maybe someone we unknown. We don't have anyone to turn to a Titan to buy the fucker. Maybe because there's someone unknown, we. Uh, our fear becomes elevated, and we and we also and they feed and we, off of that. no, but we also elevate their abilities. Maybe yeah. they're not as powerful or as smart no, as we think. If the, they're if, just weird, and we're easily scared as a species. Off, if they feed yeah. off of our fear, then the very essence of us talking about this and getting people scared about it, we are feeding them. Allegedly, if people are scared, if people are scared, other people out there listening to this might be heartened that it might be time to mobilize and make this shit happen. I don't know if I want to deal with a civil war with the extra through ultra terrestrials. How's it going to be civil? Our not we're civil, not ultra terrestrials, you know, with our resistance. I, yeah, I feel like it wouldn't be that much of a war. I mean, and you know, this plays into the, the <laughs> fucking really? reptilians too, because that's their whole deal. They feed off a of fucking Ar 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 Oregon energy or whatever it's called. Oregon energy. So why are they letting ultra terrestrials Oregon. eat our fear? <laughs> I think that's the same fuck. They're it, considered the same fucking thing. thing. No, I think they're considered Chris, the same fucking thing. Dude, I, Chris, we need we need the words of wisdom. I don't. I just, Where I do just, you stand I just, on war with the ultra terrestrials? I'm not really. I don't really. I don't think we have the manpower. To that, Would you but, let Chris speak the technology for once? to do this? You don't know we that. We might though. We have a phenomenal military. Listen, Earth's combined military. <laughs> It's yeah, well, we do. extraordinary. <laughs> not the United States alone, but you bring fucking China. I mean, because it's not like it's just Americans. It is the world. If the human race decided they had to mobilize against the ultra terrestrials because we're just sick of fucking jump scares, whatever and dumb shit, ultra terrestrial even means. Exactly. Means. These exactly. entities they can assume different forms that eat our fear. We're working under that definition. You know who we need? <sighs> that's just we need fucking Crowley. Definition. That's who we need. We need Alistair fucking Crowley to come back from the and fucking that's dead. That's what I said earlier. Protect us. Do we do it with technology or do we do it no, with magic? No, you do it with magic. You don't well, know magic. Technology. Magic you is technology, magic. as far as I'm concerned. You need you listen. <laughs> it's the you same need to thing. You get yourself an Elster Crowley, maybe possibly a Jack Parsons, and I don't want to bring it up, but maybe even <sighs> an Ron Hubbard. 
All right. Oh, listen. I don't know. You just know what? listen. You are out you of this pod. Listen. I'm turning the shit off right now. Oh, Jesus H. All right. Hard. So I, I agree. Listen, I agree. We need we need the hard. we need the fucking wizard squadron. Yeah, uh, and I don't, don't want to throw well, LRH, but listen, he's there. We need we need computer experts. We need fucking oh, armament Jesus people, Christ. and we need the wizard squadron working together to so fight we the can, We can hack them. We can shoot them. We can spell them. Okay. And all then right. when all three have this confluence, they'll come forth and they'll be like, "Hey, listen, I'm sorry, we fucked up. Let's broker a peace between our two peoples." Okay. I feel it like, could be good. I feel like the wizards aren't going to help. I mean, I'm a, I I have more faith in the wizards than I do in the actual fucking military. I don't, but you know what? I'm doing this for you. The wizard squadron will be there. I don't, Chris. I don't actually know if they're going to be contributing in no, any no, way. No, no, they're no, not. But no. they're going to be there. But because if fucking if L. Ron Hubbard and Jack Parsons open this fucking they're portal, both dead. No, but if they open this fucking portal in the 40s. So you or, think they're the ones that unleash the ultra terrestrials? We talked about this before. I yes. know, but, but, but you the didn't whole say occult it. roots oh, in NASA. No. Yeah, but you didn't necessarily say it was ultra terrestrials. You thought it was like demons and sundry it's shit. It's all the same bullshit. It's the same shot that's under the same big. umbrella. That's exactly. Too, yeah, the that's, dinosaur and it's ultra way too big. It's this no, is why we can't put it no, in one no, fucking no. pod. It's that's too neat. That's See, just, and that's it. Mark, Mark gets it, like it's too big. Let's fucking let it. Let's all swim in the sea of fucking weird. That's why I need to fucking <laughs> break this shit down. And Chris yeah. needs to keep it real. We that's need what we do. Alistair Crowley to fucking contain this bullshit. Well, all we what have is Alan Moore. Alan Moore will have to be our no, he Alistair won't. Crowley. No, he's being too pissy and arguing with yeah, fucking he's Grant ma- Morrison. He's, he's mad a lot. All but he does is complain. We're gonna we're gonna broker a piece between them so they can fucking be fucking wizarding partners. Okay. and help us assault these. Yeah, fuckers. No, we need Wizards of the Coast to to, we to team up with we do. astrophysicists. Yes, to, thank to you. be these things. Okay, how do we not get Al- pe- okay, not, not how do we get like Alex I'm, Jones I'm and Joe Rogan involved? Alex Jones. I don't want anywhere near this. Theory. <laughs> Bring them together for the first time. Okay. Fucking use the power of physics and the power of fucking sorcery. Okay. And fucking <laughs> and make these ultra terrestrials come to fucking heal for the first time in the history of our species. All right, fine. All right. And no more demons on the front lawn scaring poor children and giving moms cancer. I'm fucking putting my foot I down. Know. I don't All even right. know really what it was. Let's though. get back on track because we went way the fuck off. Or maybe a little off the It's your fault. You're yelling at all no, of us. No, I know. I'm screaming about You're all the terrestrials. I'm fucking, I'm, it's I'm all pull, the same. Everything's the same. I'm pulling beers. It's crazy. Okay, so yes. Uh, this right here, classic demon. It's almost it sure too, seems like it. It's almost too classic. But that, that makes me think that possibly the, the we sketch. could be dealing with some sort of also terrestrial impersonating a demon, trying to get the family scared, and then unfortunately giving the mother cancer. Christopher, what do you think? This I don't is? know. I think it was a living miniature black hole. Okay, I like that. That's oh. that's new. Why that's would it take th- the form of like a humanoid thing? Why wouldn't it? Good exactly. Answer. There's no reason Good for answer. it not to, but. Yeah. I don't think the the thing the what he shot disappeared. I think it just absorbed. Yeah. Oh, it, it went right into oh, him. And it made it look like it that's disappeared. Also, oh, you don't think it was like it's, it's magical skills that made it go? No, nah. man. Wood, wood it just, to another it, dimension. It, it eats matter. Yeah, Ooh. I think it's just this creature void. Yeah, creature. Right, so it's a it's an antimatter entity. I don't know why antimatter, but. <laughs> well, you just, it eats the matter. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't mean. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to be a scientific what, but, 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 hey, I mean, I, well, you know, if it was antimatter, it would actually be exploding on the lawn, and then all of fucking Brazil <laughs> yeah. would be gone. Yeah. But you ever yeah, do a, not? A bitch. It, let's be honest. We all enjoy saying antimatter. Come yeah, on, I love just, it. Yeah. It's the coolest it's like, form. It's like the yeah. anti monitor. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Anti anything just yeah. makes you feel good. Uh, so, Rob, oh. closing thoughts. What do you think this is? It's difficult. It's difficult because fucking, uh, why would it, here's the thing, it seems, tr- it's so classically demonic that it's almost foolish, it's almost clownish, even though if I saw it, I would be shitting my pants and you know not think it was silly. For. But the, it's the fucking it's, cape that throws me off. The little well, fashion statement that has the heat shimmer that they somehow felt was magnetic, I don't right. know why, and and that being necessary, like, why would you need to have a big flourish of your cape to escape? You're not fucking Batman. Yeah, this isn't Castlevania. Yeah, this isn't fucking. This isn't <laughs> exactly, yeah. in his act. You you should be fucking doing whatever. So if you need like basically Doctor Strange's wardrobe right. to fucking make a hasty exit because wood is dangerous. Right. Um. I don't know how impressed I am, and uh, and I'm I, I don't know about the cancer thing. I don't know if that's related at all, but I really do think like. 
is it the, the cloak of the coming that you need to fucking leave hell for a minute to randomly scare Brazilians? I mean, I don't fucking know. I feel, I feel like that, but it, 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 that goes into like silly fantasy land, and it's so it's it's difficult. And in some ways, maybe I'm I'm with you. I would almost prefer to think it's obviously not cryptozoological. I don't think it's extraterrestrial. I don't think it's a fucking hoax because it seems too big and fucking strange. If it is ultra terrestrial in origin, then the very nature of it could be that that's what people perceive as demons. Oh, well, sure. Because of the classical visual, like the the headless sphere or whatever you guys are talking about. Was it what it was? The headless sphere, right? The headless sphere. I don't know. It sounds like it was I, I, I have said. no idea what that <laughs> means, but it wow. sounds like it should be a thing. Jesus Christ. But it, the it, headless it, sphere. If you're dealing with an, with an auto terrestrial that is taking classical forms to, to scare you for, for whatever reason, whether it's the fuck all or it's going to fucking suck your energy or it's just here to, to, to have fucking fun. To make you reach a higher yeah, consciousness. If that's, if that's ultimately <laughs> the very definition of a demon to a human, then... Yeah, this thing is gonna is gonna have a stupid cape and a fucking a uh, dumb pitchfork and you know it's gonna dissolve wood and be ten feet tall <laughs> dissolve and wood. have all kinds Jesus. of weird stupid shit that makes no sense because it is some some form of trickster god just <sighs> that's there to just do it because that's what they fucking do. I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm not even respect it. I think they're fucking <laughs> assholes. But what I'm saying is, it's almost too classic. But on the same note, it has a fancy cape. It does have a fancy cape. Like Michael Keaton and Batman. Never take the tulpa off the table. Oh, you're going to go tulpa? Brazil is literally one of the most densely uh, Catholicized right. Right. countries on earth. And if you see enough of this classic, again, old world imagery. You can go tulpa. Um, there's every reason to think that something is like there's the amorphous unknown that becomes what uh, you believe it is. Yeah. You you literally manifest the horror that you see. Kind of like fucking that, Bradbury's that Martian Chronicles. Yeah, totally. All right. Um, so you're going Tulpa. So I'm... I, oh, tulpa, I, love it. I, I don't know if specifically it would be Tulpa, but a Tulpa-esque entity that right, was cool. becoming what the fearful witnesses were most afraid of. All right. Awesome. Uh, otherwise, the cliches don't make sense to no, me. No, they don't. They don't. I'm, I'm saying that it's ultra terrestrial because they are taking classical cliches like that and turning it into scaring us or whatever to suck our energy and whatever happens. Or maybe this is literally <laughs> just what cancer looks like and most people don't get to this see it. This is a physical like, form of cancer. Cancer just shows up and fucking feet touches tall, you and sadly you get in cancer. A, in a cape, yeah. That's why some people can smoke fucking three packs a day and live to 97. Yep. Other people fucking get boned when they eat nothing but kale and jog there you go. and uh, yeah that's it, true and, and every now and again you're awake when it happens and boy that just makes it even worse i don't know i, I don't think that's it. the case no I, but. I think that is the perfect way to close the two for one mystery bag monday thank you for joining us as always for the kryptonaut podcast uh be sure to follow us the social media as the instas the twitters the facebooks uh rob and chris are on facebook i'm on insta and i'm on twitter Facts. I'm Twitter. technically on Facebook, but I don't really look there quite a bit because it's a nightmare city. But you can leave ratings and reviews for this podcast. By the way, Nightmare you City, can. great Umberto Lenzi zombie film. Yeah, it I is. just had to say this that. This is true. Uh, ratings and reviews, the iTunes, the Apple Podcast apps, leave them there. You can also leave a review on Facebook if you want. Uh, stick around. We got some reviews coming up. And we're talking to you soon. All right, bye yeah, again. No, I mean, <laughs> bye again. Fucking let's... Let's really get it together, people, and fucking defend ourselves. Oh, also, too, uh, be sure to check out our Big Cartel shop, Big Cartel, or kryptonautpodcast.bigcartel.com. We have some pins. We got some koozies and our tea public shop. Let, let our sweet kryptonaut pins be your badge in this fucking war. Exactly. And then, yeah, yeah. And then you're, go you're, to, you're the bulwark against the madness of ultra-terrestrials. Go to tea public, get yourself a shirt, wear your shirt, fight ultra-terrestrials, and um, yeah. Just buy shit from us and fight all your trust drills. Here you go. <laughs> 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 Fucking A. Just buy shit. He kills Chris. Chris is dead. And I'm, just, I'm gonna go pee. <laughs> Bye. See ya. Oh my god. All right, thank you for joining us for the ratings and reviews. These are coming to you from the iTunes and Apple Podcast apps. Great show, five stars from Holfrick. A great podcast about the more obscure cryptids out there. I am definitely glad I stumbled across the show. The only complaint I have is now I have to wait for more episodes to come out after binging the entire backlog. <laughs> Keep up the great work, guys. 
Thank you. Sweet. Robin Chris, keep up the good work. Thank you. Uh, moving on. Just discovered this. Love it. Five stars from a circle of sharks. Ooh. Been oh, looking for a cryptozoology podcast for ages. Love from London, England. Oh, Damn. London, England. What up? Damn. What's it's happening right. there, a circle of sharks? Awesome. Uh, okay. Crypto Convert. Five stars from Trobin007. Easily my favorite podcast. I am new to cryptids and podcasts and found you guys. Funny, fascinating, and awesome banter. You are the best thing about Monday. I tried some other crypto podcasts and was turned off by overly serious interviews and stories. You guys had a perfect mix of professionalism and fun to drag me in. Uh, you're open. You've opened up a whole new world for me. Keep it up. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, we will. That's we awesome. Will. Uh, and our last uh, review here is from Love This Pod, five stars from KA-52 and a half, all spelled out. Wow. Jeez. Oh, okay, so they go on to say, in the last 24, in the past 24 hours, I was given free flyers tickets, and I found the Kryptonaut podcast. Also, <laughs> my mom found my wheat stash, and I still haven't told her that I'm changing my major yet. <laughs> so thanks for the episode to drown out uh, the chaos in my life, Parker. Fuck you're, yeah. You're welcome, Parker. All right, Parker. I think that, uh, you know Jeez. what? Flyers tickets, fucking awesome. Awesome. How yeah, dope definitely. is that when you see hockey? I mean, I'm a Penguins fan, You've, but God bless you. I'm a New Jersey Devils fan, but clearly. Um, so you found the Kryptonite <laughs> podcast, dope. Your mom finds your weed stash. That's a, you that, gotta, that's a bummer. It's the opposite of dope. Yeah, yeah. But, well, but, it is dope. But, well, yeah. <laughs> but he goes on to say here that I haven't told her I'm changing my major. Now, so is she going to be happier? So are, are, you, are you like changing it from like fucking pre-med to like... Ancient the, Incan art history and yeah. fucking Photoshop. Well, no, because if that's I mean, the case, you're fucked, dude. He, yeah. He's a he's a hockey fan who likes to smoke weed, so he's probably doing something fucking Listen, dope I like, like it, we would do. But, but, oh. I, but this is the advice right, yeah. I was going to give you. High Those things ice. that seem tumultuous in that moment, like dealing with mom and weed and fucking th that shit. That shit will gloss over. Everything's going to be cool. I'm glad you enjoy the monsters and fucking uh, just. Just keep on keeping on, and it'll all work out, buddy. Keep on trucking, buddy, and uh, thank you all for the ratings and interviews. We appreciate them greatly. Again, feel free to leave those on the iTunes and Apple Podcast apps or the Facebook page. And this is our final goodbye. We will be talking to you. Wow. Wow.